Hi booktube, welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie and I'm going to do the over 30 book tag as I am I am 32. So I figure I go ahead and do it and I don't think it's going to get any easier for me to find answers to these questions because I almost feel like some of these questions the way to get an accurate answer would be like you would find it like people that are, are a lot closer to my real life, to my situation are people like um you know in a romance novel or like some kind of contemporary drama or something and I just don't read a lot of that a lot of my books are more fantastical or older or classics like before my like before the 20th century books set before the 20th century written before the 20th century um, I, you know, there are a few, but it's just, I still haven't read enough, but I'm doing the, I'm going to do the best I can, and I believe one of these, I don't really have an answer for it. Okay, so, but I do have an answer for the first question, well, sort of, it's actually kind of a cheat. So, that's the other thing, is I kind of cheat with some of these a little bit. That's how hard this one was. Name... One of your favorite books that features a protagonist who is 30 years or older. And I did the math and turns out this one is just under 30. But I'm going to do it anyway because I don't want, I'm lazy and don't want to go through all my books to see if I can find someone that's 30 years old. I mean, I'm sure there's someone, but. And that is The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. Yes, there's a bookmark in it because I did start to reread it because I have um, read it, I think, twice now. Um, this is a multiple timeline story starting in the early 1900s where there's a little girl named Nell who was left on a, left on the Australian docks when she was little with only a fairy, by the, the woman she called the authoress had just left her there and all she had was this book of fairy tales that was her only possession her only possessions. She is taken in by the Dockmaster as one of their own, and when she's 21, she finds out the truth that she was actually taken by these this this family. And so throughout most of the book, she is trying to find out what happened to her parents, who who her parents are, who the authoress was, and we also have a timeline where. Nell's granddaughter Cassandra has left been left on her doorstep in the 70s by her mother and so she Cassandra is raised by her grandmother and when her grandmother dies she picks up the mystery of Nell's parentage and figure and inherits Nell this cottage that Nell had owned in England so, and the protagonist I'm thinking of, because her, both her and Nell are kind of our protagonist, but I'm picking Cassandra because she's the modern day contemporary protagonist because the story, her timeline is 2005, and she's 29, so it's just under 30, she's just under 30 years old. Like I said, I'm lazy and didn't want to have to go through and try to find any, to find any other protagonists that were 30 years old. So this was actually one this was actually one of my first Kate Morton books that I ever read and I just fell in love with her writing and her store her plots. And I guess there were some people that didn't get formulaic and a little confusing, but I I just love her works. Um so yeah, that's my close to 30 protagonist. Um and one of my favorite books. Okay, so question number two. This might be the one. Is this the one where I don't... Oh, nope. I have an answer for this one. This is another... This is kind of a stretch. But name a book that represents who you are when you were younger. Um, I don't really have... I mean, there might have been some better options. Like, even some options of books that more represent me that I just haven't read. Like, um... But like I said, I don't read a lot of books where I feel like I re connect to the heroine, the heroines in a literal sense. Like, I don't read a lot of books where, you know, 
you almost have to go with finding one you connect with them metaphorically because you know I read a lot of fantasy and classics so I I just went with the best option I can think of for this one is Wizard of Oz by Frank L. Baum um and you know I feel like I was living, you know, I picked this one because I always feel like I'm living in another world and my own world of my own imagination since I was a kid, um, which a lot, I'm sure a lot of us readers grew up feeling that way. We lived in another world. So I feel like Dorothy feeling like she's trapped and wants to escape to another world and she does in her dreams because, you know, um... That, I feel like that's the, that's the best thing I could come up with. Because, like I said, I don't read a lot of books with heroes that are exactly like me, you know. Um, but, yeah, so that was, this is my best option. This, it's a classic about a little girl who goes to the land of Oz and has, and got, gets together with the group of companions. Um... The, the scarecrow has no brain, and a cowardly lion who wants courage, and the timid who wants a heart. And along, you know, along the way she meets flying monkeys, talking trees, a evil cackling witch who wants to steal her shoes. Um, the shoes that the good witch of the, Glinda the good witch of the north gave her. And going to the wizard is the only way she can get, Dorothy can get home to her world in Kansas. Um, and then this, this is basically, this is a collection of the first, first, first five novels. And I wouldn't have got the same one uh, for the next set of novels, but I didn't because I just found myself not picking this one up. Like, because, yes, I love the story, but this is a hefty book, so it's not as fun to read a book like this. It's just, it's pretty, but not as fun to read. Um, but yeah, so that's the best. It's not, it's a kind of reaching, but, I mean, I wish I could go to Oz. <laughs> Oz looks like a fun place to go to. Okay, so next question, question number three. Name a book that represents where you are in life now, and this was the one I skipped. Because I could not, like, again, I could not find a good answer for this. Like, there might be some books that I'm, like, I almost for a second I almost thought about Little Women, even though I never read Little Women, because even though it was a different time period, I'm kind of, like, in that in-between stage. And like Joe March, I, you know, I'm not interested in marriage right now. And, um, so it's, like, so, I mean, that's kind of, you know, um, but I, I ended up DNFing the, that one. is I just enjoy the movie adaptations more than reading the book. Although I am going to introduce my niece to that book, um, when she's able to read a chapter book, a big, thick, chunky chapter book. I'm going to introduce her to Little Women because I think part of the problem is I got introduced to that book, the book version, too late. Like, I saw the movie, the 1994 or 5 movie, I can't remember, one of those years. But, yeah, um, so, uh, I don't have an answer for that one. Okay, so, question number four, name a book that represents something that has never changed about you. And this, again, is kind of a cheat because I have not finished this book. Um, but I picked A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This is the first book in a series. Um, and I am actually resisting the urge not to buy the rest of the books in the series and just get this one read, which I have not picked it up, but I'm going to um, start reading it again in October. Um, but I picked this one because, like, our main character has a passion for learning and you know, gaining knowledge. So, um, that's, and I always love learning. I just don't like sitting in class or hearing a teacher a lecture. But I do like learning new things and learning about the world around me. And I feel like the main character in this book, um, Diana, 
It's very much, she's a very scholarly person, and I would love to be a scholar like her. I would love to actually be a scholar. Um, but I don't know if it pays the bills for for science second of all. That might be another thing where I need the math. <laughs> um, it seems like everything I want to do, I still have to be really good at math. And I'm just, I cannot comprehend math. And it's, you know, but anyway. So yeah, I thought, you know, this... And it's not actually it's not a trilogy anymore, it's a series. But yeah, so I feel like her, her wanting to be a, being a scholar, wanting to learn things is very similar to me in that I've always wanted to learn new things and you know um I think I'm, I would be just as fascinated by, you know, vampires as she would be. You know, especially Mr. Grumpy Pants over here, um, what is his name? Matthew. <laughs> He's like a mature, ver more mature version of Edward, I think. Which is funny, I've read enough of this book, I feel like I have, but I haven't read a lot. You know, I still have a long way to go, but I've read enough that there's one reviewer, which I've already, I think I've already said this when I was reading it the first time when, that I got from, when I got it from the library, that... I have to disagree with this one review I read where Twilight, they said, apparently they thought Twilight was superior. And yeah, I was not, I'm not as hating on Twilight as a lot of people. Um, in fact, I probably defend it too much. Although not, not like a Twihard, I do not defend it as much as that because, you know, but, um, I don't, what I've read so far of this, I do not think Twilight is superior to this. This is superior to, if a book's superior to Twilight, it's this one. But even then, I don't think either one of them is really superior to the other. I just don't think, well, I um, mean, okay, maybe I kind of do, or I don't think Twilight is superior to this book, but I don't think we need to compare them. Yes, they have similar things, but a lot of books do that kind of thing where, like, a mortal woman falls in love with a vampire, and he's all broody and cranky, and... You know, is trying to protect her, and it's like forbidden love and all that. We stories like that exist everywhere. It's not just Twilight, okay? Twilight didn't invent that plot. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so basically back to the point of the of why I brought this book up. That I, Diana's scholarly pursuits are similar to me, and I do wish I could be a scholar, but that's probably not gonna happen. Like, um, okay, so next is question number five. I thought about changing this answer, but I still love this classic, so, um, but the question itself is name one of your favorite classics, um, because I have read a lot more classics since then, but I'm going to just go ahead and stick with it to save me time. Um, Crime and Punishment by Theodore Dostoevsky. I'm probably not saying that right. Um, this is about this young student who gets into debt and decides to solve his problem by murdering someone. Um, this takes place in Russia. And this is the year... Let me see if I can figure out. Um, okay, it doesn't say when it takes place. But... You know, basically, he's racked with guilt about this situation, about, you know, choosing to murder, murdering this person. Um, and there is a bit of a love story, but I'm not in it for the love story. I don't really care about that plot. In fact, it's kind of annoyed by that plot point. Or at least I wish they could have done better with it, like make her a little less one-dimensional. But this was written a long time ago, so... Um... And the, the romance isn't even really the most important aspect. Anyway, it's more how slowly Rascal, Nik Rascal Nikolov goes crazy with the guilt and his fear of getting caught. And then they also have the subplot of his sister is being, black, is being blackmailed by two suitors, the guys that are interested in her and she's not interested in them. So there's a bit of also a bit of a love triangle. Technically a love a weird love thing because there's three guys there's actually three guys that are attracted that are interested in her um but yeah this, I don't know it's 
I feel like it was timing with this one when I read this that I, that I just fell in love with this book. I, you know, because before I started reading more and more classics and getting into them more, a book like this might have potentially bored me. But this time it was just so fascinating being into this guy's mind and watching his, him descend into madness. And racked with guilt and just his fears and all that. It's just, it was really, it was just really good. Okay, so that was number five. Question number six is the last one. Um, name a book you like or would like to read that was published in the year you were born. And this one is, and that is Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. I keep meaning to read one of Ken Follett's books because I have two of his series, his two series. They were some of the first books I bought from the Rose Stops bookshop and I've been meaning to get to this one. My excuse though for a longest time was this was it was a mass market. Oh, okay, well that makes me feel a lot better. Um sorry, I was debating about don't putting some books in a donation pile to give to the roast office and I put a my the stamp, you know how sometimes you have you have a stamp where you put your name on the book. Well, I did that because originally I was keeping both those books, but then I decided to get decided to put them to be donated. And I was debating, I was nervous would they still take the book even if my name was stamped in them. And this one actually, which, which is, this one actually has one of the, an address label on it. Which, you know, that's what my dad was like, well as long as it just has your address label, you're good. Which this one actually does have an address label in it. It's a good thing I bought it because there might be some pervert who buys the book and decides I'm going to track this woman down. Um, but anyway, sorry, I was got distracted. Um, so this is the basic premise of this is the building of a cathedral, and um, so but I have been told I've heard heard from many people who love this book that it's more than just that, which I'm not surprised. I mean, which of course, because I mean look at the size of this. You know, it's so much more. It's like a basically about this family. There's over nine hundred pages. Yeah, there's nine hundred and seventy three, so almost a thousand. So, um well, but yeah, this, um, and I think it's about this family, too, and, like, a, you know, a love story, and also, like, characters falling in love and stuff, so, I mean, I have read the first couple chapters quite a few times, and I have been meaning to pick it up again. It's just, I feel like there's certain books I've come to notice that it depends on when I start reading them, like, if I read, if I start reading some of these longer books when I'm tired and falling asleep, then that's, I might, it might take me, it might not be a good start. It might not lose my, it might lose my interest if I'm like tired and not be able to concentrate on what I'm reading. Then my head might go off wondering, my, you know, and, um, if I try to start them when I'm, you know, when bringing them to work. And only reading it during my 50 minutes break, then that won't be enough time for me to get into the book. So, the best time probably is during the day when I'm off. Or even, you know, even potentially in the evening, like when I get off from work. But it, it depends. But so, yeah, so I want to start this one. I need to start, I'm going to start this one from the beginning, probably. Okay, so those are my, that's my attempt at the over 30 book tag. So if you are over 30 and you want to do this tag, feel free to do it. It's kind of fun and maybe you won't struggle with answering these questions as much as I did. But, I mean, I guess I could have waited a little bit longer, but I was like, I, you know, I was thinking, would my answers ever change? Would I ever not struggle with answering these questions? I mean, of course, watch one day in the future that will all like in the next nine, I guess eight years, I think. Yeah, I guess eight years because um, 
which I'm between 30 and 40. I think it would be eight because I'm, or maybe seven, uh, eight or seven years. If I, I'll watch, I'll come up with better answers for this question. Um, but until then, that was the best I could do. So again, if you are over 30 and you want to do this, and like you might not struggle like I did with this tag. Um, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't already, click the bell notification below if you want to be notified when I post new videos, and I hope you're enjoying your reading, you're staying healthy, um, and I will talk to you all later. Alright, bye!